praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I wanted to talk to you today. This will be my third attempt at trying to make this recording. I tried to do it Saturday morning. I had mentioned on my broadcast Saturday night that I was preaching so good. (laughs) I was on fire for Jesus that morning. And I recorded it, and I was actually live streaming. But when I went to process the video, it showed it processing. When I went back, it was gone. And then maybe an hour or two later, I checked YouTube again, and it was there. But when I would push play, there's nothing. All I get is a little donut circle. I'm like, you know, the devil is a liar. So I'm going to attempt this again. The title of this message is what I think the EMP will be. Now, I'm not saying this is written in stone. I'm not a prophet. I I told you, I'm not a prophet. But there are times that you, you perceive things And, you know, it's not contradicting scripture or anything like that, which I I do my best. That will never be on purpose. If I do it, it'd be a mistake. And I'll go back. If I catch it, I'll correct it and I'll correct it for the record. I don't even like, I don't even feel right if I leave an and or a V out if I catch it. (laughs) You know, so I'm going to be reading from. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But what I want to talk about is what I think the EMP will be because we are in the last seconds of the last minutes of the last hours of the last days, okay? I mean, literally, we've always known that there was a imminent return impressed upon us in the scripture for those who believe in the biblical doctrine of the catching away, the hypothesis, the seized by force and snatched out suddenly. The rapture. Okay. Because we know the Lord has promised he's coming back for his bride. So there's a number of factors. See, God can make a pronouncement, and it'd be a hundred, a thousand, whatever he wants of blessings or purposes or intent or, you know, variables of all of that involved because he's the Lord. He's dynamic. (laughs) Okay. So we know that Part of the rapture is the resurrection of the dead. And then those who are alive in Christ being transformed and getting their glorified bodies. Just like those that are dead in Christ, they're raised for their glorified bodies. They're waiting on them. They want them. And we who are born again, we hate this flesh. Now, we don't hate it like we're insane. We hate it because we're tired of the sin nature. We we groan in our spirit to be alleviated. I believe that's the right word. <laughs> yeah, it is because alleviate, one of the over, over-the-counter uh, ibuprofen drugs, that is what relieves pain. We we are looking for this glorious appearing to have this flesh transformed because we are sick of the sin nature that we have to contend with and wrestle with. So I wanted to share this with you because I was talking to another sister about it on the phone a couple of weeks ago. And she said, you know, I had never heard that before. I said, I 
I perceived this many, many years ago, more more than probably 15 years or so ago, that this is probably what the EMP is going to be. I say probably. Because I don't know. But they already got their lives ready to go. This is why I'm thinking that it, it may be right. Because they're going to blame China. <laughs> is, is that the way Trump say China? They're going to blame China or Russia when it happens. It, if this is how it go down, which I perceive that it will be this way. But I guess we're going to find out from up there <laughs> or as it happens. But we, when we look back and see if we're permitted to look down and see what's going on, the aftermath and the lies they're going to roll out to cover what the Lord has done. And this is what they're doing all along. Every time something goes down and, and it's the Lord doing it, they got a plausible explanation and plausible deniability. They come up with their lies to try to cover up what the Lord is doing. First Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm going to start at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus. I always skip that word also. Let me back up. Let me read that again. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this is, excuse me, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, I don't know why I'm having such difficulty this morning. Let me, let me go back. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning. And I won't break this down for you. Verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant. And we know ignorant means unlearned, don't know, without knowledge. Right? Brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And then we know that word sleep there means they have died. These are our brothers and sisters in Christ that have went home to be with the Lord. that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So Paul is saying, we ain't like the world. When when they people die, all is lost for them because they did not go to be with the Lord. They don't have hope of a resurrection. He says, for if we believe, now I want to point out, I keep trying to point this out. I'm going to point it out again. Who is the we? Paul could have said, <laughs> the we. Who's the we? That's us. That's believers. For if we believe, 
that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep, what, in Jesus, that's the qualifier, be in Jesus, be born again, be a believer, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. I'm going to stop right here for a minute. Pay attention when you see emphatics and declarative statements in the scripture. They're very important. This is a declarative statement. He is saying, will God bring with him? There's no wiggle room. There's no exception. If they're in Jesus and they're asleep, or you in Jesus and you alive, God is going to bring you with him. So all them liars, they say, and you truly haven't repented of all your sin. You're probably not going in the rapture. Liars, deceivers, manipulative devils. I ain't scared to call somebody a devil. When they're coming against the word of the living God, when it's plainly written, now maybe they're doing it in ignorance, but I didn't call no names, so it's fair. But most of these people are coming in a self-righteous spirit and attitude because they are relying on their own self-righteousness. If you haven't truly repented of all your sin, they put the emphasis on truly. You have to be washed in the blood of the lamb to go. For this we say, verse 15, unto you by the word of the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. For this we say, there's we again. Now, what's this we? Because Paul is speaking, he wrote this, he's speaking by himself, right? Not according to this scripture. According to this scripture, he said, this we say. Well, now, who's we? Paul ain't French. Shout out to all the French people. We, we. But Paul ain't French. And he's not schizophrenic. He's not possessed. So, for this we say, the other apostles, the other apostles were in agreement. The other apostles had the same revelation. Evidently, they had conferred. They had spoken. How could he say this we say? All right. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, who's the we which are alive and remain? Believers. Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. That just simply means we ain't going to get in their way. <laughs> We're not a hindrance to them. For the Lord himself, verse 16, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Let me go back. Verse 16, for the Lord himself, who is the Lord? Jesus Christ is Lord. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then. So when you see a then, that means something transpired first. Now we just read what's going to transpire first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up. 
Now, all those people who lie and say the rapture is not a biblical doctrine and the rapture is not in the Bible and the rapture, this word caught up is where we get the word rapture. These two words, the word there in the Greek is harpazo. G726 To seize, carry off by force, to seize on, claim for one's self eagerly, to snatch out or away. And I I love this because it reminds me of when you see a little child, and I've seen this, and, and you may have even experienced it, had it happened to you as a child or had to do this to your own children, where the parent will have the child and they and they get them out of the car and they're in a parking lot and the little child, they might be like two, maybe three years old, and they get excited. They see something, they decide they want to dart, they want to run. And thank God the Lord give people rubber arms. <laughs> the parent snatched the child. Now, they might, I've seen them where they snatch the child and they snatch them so hard that they they scare the child. I don't think they really hurt the child, but they scare them, you know, grabbing their arm or whatever they're able to grab hold of to catch them because the child is in danger. Oh, 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 I said something there. <laughs> it might be applicable in the situation as to why he going to snatch us out of here. but. The parent snatched the child, and the child might start crying or whatever. But the parent don't care about you crying right then. It's to protect you. It's to save you. So they snatch them, and they don't ask their permission. <laughs> they snatch them. And I was laughing because there's some people, they believers, but they don't believe in the rapture. They're going to miss out on the crown. Because the Bible says there's a crown that awaits those that are looking for his glorious appearing. And they don't believe in the rapture, so they ain't looking. They're going to miss out on that crown. And I really believe, I can't prove it, but I perceive that when the Lord said, hold fast that no man takes your crown, this is the crown he's referring to. The crown for looking for his glorious appearing because there are people who are losing hope. There are people who are believers that are going, oh, where, you know, where's the sign of his coming? Huh? Honey, I ain't looking for signs anymore. I'm listening for sounds. There's enough signs. Blind man can see what's going on in the world. But they've actually let people talk them out of this biblical doctrine. So he's coming for what's his. We belong to him. The Bible says we are sealed until the day, singular, of redemption. And I believe this is the day <laughs> of redemption that it's referring to. When he actually, because he has purchased us with his own blood, comes and claims what's his. And the Bible says, continuing in verse 17, that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, that's the dead in Christ, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18, wherefore comfort one another. With these words, we got a meeting to go to. And the Bible says we see through a glass darkly right now, but then. What's the then right here? <laughs> but then face to face, because we're going to meet him in the air. Ain't going to be no more mystery. And then all the blasphemers, the rapture is a comfort doctrine. <laughs> yeah, blaspheming, blaspheming the Lord himself. 
the rapture is a comfort doctrine. Well, uh, good. I'm glad you recognize because that's exactly what the scripture says. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we're doing exactly what our Lord instructed us to do. Now, <laughs> I said I have a lot of fun with that because they they mock the living God, and I think it's only fair to mock them right back. Because they think they're mocking us. They're not mocking us. What did Paul say? He said, this we say. Verse 15, this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jesus Christ is Lord. So he's saying this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Hmm. That sounds like thus saith the Lord. This is a prophecy. And he's declaring that the Lord has told them to tell us this revelation. So when they mock it, they're not mocking us. They think they're mocking us. They're mocking the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jesus Christ is Lord. They're mocking the Lord Jesus Christ. But hey, they will bear that. Now, You say, well, sister, okay, all right, that was all right, I get you. Right. Well, what, what does that have to do with <laughs> what you think the EMP will be? I'm glad you asked that question. This is what I think the EMP will be, what I just read. Because the Bible says that the same power, that raised Jesus from the dead would quicken us in our mortal bodies, right? Now, we think about that power. Maybe we don't think about that power enough. But that power that we have, that resurrection power, is now going to be multiplied I don't even know how many times, many hundreds of thousands or even millions of times, whatever that number is for the dead in Christ, to be raised. Now, I want you to think about this for a second, because a lot of times we get this, this image that there's these full bodies that's coming up out of the grave. Well, it's going to be that, but you got to remember some of these bodies They've been laying in these graves for hundreds, if not thousands of years. There's no flesh left on those bodies. It's just bones. Some people's bones that didn't end up in, in proper burials and stuff, they turned to dust. There's people got eaten, God forbid, by sea creatures and animals. And Remember, remember the Christians in the lion's den? Bodies ain't, they ain't, they gone. But somewhere, just somewhere in this atmosphere, in this earth, the Lord knows where maybe one speck of their DNA <laughs> remains. I don't know. I'm just putting this out there for your consideration. And he is going to resurrect. That person. Ooh. What kind of power does that take? Now, I gave you an example for that person. Now, multiply that for however many people that is around the world that he's going to do that for. What kind of power? Does that take? And then lift them up in that transformation. And then at that same moment, we are transformed from these old cruddy bodies, <laughs> these old fallen bodies, to a glorified body. I want you to think about what kind of power 
And then think about this little measly grid that they got around the world. You know, the grid. That power, I believe, can't prove it, but this is what I suspect, will short out the grid around the world. As we are pulled out of here. And I think they know it. They perceive it too. They mean in the children of darkness. So they already got their lives ready to go. Now whether or not it's going to be aliens took us, they might throw out a lot of different plausible deniabilities. Or An asteroid, you know they've been throwing that out there. I still ain't never figured out how an asteroid is supposed to get past the firmament. But, okay, or maybe you can tell me. You know, the dome, <laughs> they call it the dome. They even had a TV program. It didn't last long. It was called the dome. They know it's up there. So how's it supposed to get past the firmament? Nobody's ever told me. I ain't never been worried about it. i tell you why. Look in this scripture. God ain't worried about it. So even if there was an asteroid and it was flying toward the earth, if it was hurling at 250,000 miles an hour, God ain't ner- nervous, scared, bothered, worried. The Bible says he never sleeps nor slumbers. To live is Christ and to die is gain. So even if it hits you, you won't even know what hit you. <laughs> Something's traveling that fast, and you get to go be with Jesus. When? Y'all got to start. We, do we believe this thing or we don't? If we don't, if you don't, because I do, if you don't, you might as well go fishing. You, you know, now, I ain't mad at you if you're trying to believe. Then you, then you sit at the foot of the teacher. Until you're convinced. That's fine. I understand that. But I'm talking about if you're just playing at this thing, you're just pretending, you, 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 and you have no, and you just, you just want to. For some people, I've perceived that Christianity for them is, is a Christian social club. It's a safe place to be. You know, they don't like the club because they do perceive there's darkness in there. There's a reason they call it club. You get banged in the head when you go in there, whether you know it or not. It is an attack on your persona. And it is a place of darkness. They don't just call them clubs. They call them nightclubs. Children of the night go there. You remember that song from back in the day? The freaks come out at night. It's true. I remember, I remember my dad telling me when I was a, a, a young girl, probably, probably early teens. 13, 14, something, and he said, baby, ain't nothing out them streets after 10 o'clock at night but trouble. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Like, he showed sure enough was right. After 10 o'clock, it seemed like the freaks come out. And I remember hearing on a broadcast back when I used to travel. This was many years ago. There was uh, wasn't a whole lot. It w- we didn't have XM radio. There wasn't no satellite radio. I mean, I know for people who travel, if you travel by vehicle, XM was an exciting thing because it gave you many more options of stuff to listen to. But the radio station at that time. The only way you could really listen to anything, if you were going literally through a state to another one traveling, would be AM radio. And you would need something that was a national broadcast so you could pick up, in other words, keep listening to it. So what I mean is if you were starting out, like let's say you were in California and you were traveling, you went through Nevada. And it's, you know, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and you were listening to a national broadcast out here. Then you could, once you got into Nevada and that radio started 
that station started fading at some point, you could find it again because it was a national broadcast. Otherwise, you had to find something else to listen to, which can be a little irritating if it was really, really good, you know, but you can't stop because you got to you gotta continue on your travel, but <laughs> you want to hear what was being said, and it would be very frustrating. If you've had that experience, you know what I'm talking about. Probably not, though, now with, with uh, satellite radio. Most of y'all never had that experience. And uh, But this was a national broadcast I was listening to. I won't mention the name of it, but it was Coast the Coast National Broadcast. And on this program, they had a person that I don't remember the man's name. I just remember them talking about this. Now, this was, like I said, going on like close to 20 years ago. And they were talking about this threat. They were talking about the threat. And every few years, if you notice things that don't like catch on, that they can't get people to be, really be afraid of, or it just has like a, a what do they call it, a sh- uh, shelf life, or just a little bit of time that they can get people to be upset about it or whatever, and then it fades away and they move on to something else. Well, this hung around for a little bit. People talked about it for a little while, and then it just kind of disappeared, which was this whole concept of an EMP. And I noticed that they they bring it back from time to time through the years. But I perceive this because of like what I was saying about the resurrection. They got to have a cover story. But anyway, this gentleman was supposed to be some type of electronics expert that the radio broadcaster was interviewing. And he asked him, I'll never forget this if I live to be 100. He said, if the grid were to go down from one of these EMPs, now they were saying this and went up about 20 miles or so in the air and somebody detonated some type of weapon, God forbid, that it would short out the grid. And they asked him, they said, well, now, if that would have happened, how long would it take to bring the grid back online? Now, what was peculiar to me was he didn't say three years. And he didn't say four years. He didn't even say three to four years. He specifically said three and a half years. Now, I'm driving when I heard this, and I'm like, what? Three and a half years? And I immediately perceived that well, the Great Tribulation, the last part, when the most worst part of it is going to be, you know, three and a half years. There's a line of demarcation in there where the man of sin is going to confirm an agreement with the original people of God. So I'm looking at this going, three and a half years? So for three and a half years, you're saying it's going to be darkness and they're going to have to, it's going to take that long, which means all the computer systems will be down, all the tracking systems, all the cell phone, all of that will be down. I was like, why? So I kind of put that on the shelf. I find it the way in my mental Rolodex. I, I kept, I, I remembered, I said, I wonder if that's going to have something to do, you know, with why it, there's a there seems to be like a delay because when you read in the Bible, you wonder why the man of sin don't immediately just go to the mark. There's a there's a period of time that still transpires before he gets people there. Because the Bible says he's gonna cause it. If you I, I read that definition. Let me look here. It was in Merriam Webster's I only use it because my uh, I had a grade school teacher, and this was one of the <laughs> she was my favorite, and this was uh, one of the dictionaries that she used that I just remember. The word "cause" something or someone that produces an effect, result, or condition. Something or someone that makes something happen or exist. 
a reason for doing or feeling something. Something such as an organization, belief, idea, or goal that a group or people support or fight for. Well, we see a cause going on right now, don't we? There's a cause for a lot of the things that's happening right now, isn't it? A reason for an action or condition. Something that brings about an effect or result, trying to find the cause of the accident. That's an example. A person or thing that is the occasion of an action or state. Example, a cause for celebration. Especially an agent that brings something about. Example, she is the cause of your trouble. Sufficient reason. Example, discharged for cause. A ground of legal action. Mm, very, very interesting because the way, the way this Bible is. Dealing with law, legality, we're learning about words. I told y'all words have meaning. Look at what cause. Look at all these... <laughs> A ground of legal action in the case they are paid by the cause for their expert opinions. A matter or question to be decided. Example, the city council is involved with the school department causes. A principle or movement Militantly defended or supported. Example, the insurgents' cause. A charitable undertaking. Example, and you've heard this, is for a good cause. It's a deep word. <laughs> deep word. And this is the word that the KJV uses. I'll never forget the gentleman. I, I'm sorry, I forgot his name right now. And he wrote a book. He was a guest on uh, Sister Renee's broadcast. He's supposed to be back on there this coming January in 2021. But he got to where he was talking about the the Nephilim and the fallen ones. It was a wonderful presentation. It's on her channel. It was on. He was a guest. I don't think it was her Thursday Theological Throwdown, but. It might have been, but it, he was a guest. You can go back and find it. And he was talking about the Nephilim, the fallen ones. And I was listening intently. The man has so much information in his research. I'm so sorry his name escapes me right now. But I'll go back and put it in the description. Uh, and I'll find a link to the video and I'll put it in the description for you. And he got to the point in the broadcast at the very end. They weren't intending on end, ending there. They probably were going to go on for another 15, 20 minutes or so. But he said this, and the broadcast ended. The stream stopped. He said that the Bible, the KJV, the language that was written in the, in the KJV was the code breaker to our understanding, and, it, and, it, and the stream ended. <laughs> Now, look at that word cause I just showed you, right? In, in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the definition, how deep that word is. And that's the word the Bible uses in the KJV. And don't tell me, well, it says under my modern terms, yeah, but that's a knockoff. So just, <laughs> I understand it might say it in your modern translation, but that's a Johnny come lately. So. That's amazing to me. This is not an accident. So they're going to come up with a plausible explanation for the EMP if this is what happens. I don't know that this is what's going to happen. 
I perceive this is probably going to be the case. Now, here's what's interesting. The Bible says out of the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. So I didn't really put much stock in what that gentleman said on that radio broadcast that night. I thought, yeah, I thought about it. I thought it was interesting. But like I said, I kind of put it on the shelf. About a year, year and a half later, I'm traveling again, listening to the same broadcast as I'm traveling. They had another different person now. It was a man, but it was a different person. Don't recall the gentleman's name. They got to talking about this again, the EMP. And this expert, when he asked him if the grid were to go down as a result of an EMP, how long would it take for it to come back up? And how now I I remember when this happens, I go, oh, yeah, I remember them talking about that before. Not these two particular people, but uh, the different gentleman. And I was I was listening intently because I'm like, I wonder if he's going to say the same thing. But I really didn't think he was going to say the same thing. I thought maybe he'd say two years, maybe he'd say four years. <laughs> he said three and a half years. I about fell over. I about fell off my seat. <laughs> I was like, three and a half years. Said it again. <laughs> three and a half years. A different guy. I said, there's something to this. There's something to this. You can take it or leave it. I ain't saying it's written in stone. But I think it's very interesting. And I also saw something else. I'm going to share with you. The Bible talks about that during this time, that never was before, nor shall ever be again, the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel, for those you don't know. That there's admonishments in the scripture for them to go into the wilderness. There's a place prepared. For those who are believers, this would be the perfect time when the grid goes down. Now I'm talking about people who are left behind. Oh, let me make a clarification. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the people who are left behind that become believers. Okay? The tribulation saints. All right? And then his original people. This is the perfect time for them to get themselves together if they're not prepared. Because remember, people who are left behind were the ones who weren't prepared. They were the foolish <laughs> they were the foolish virgins. They weren't prepared. So this will be the time that they can prepare to get strong if their physical body ain't strong, if they can, you know, try to get their health strong, try to get their self together, figure out where they're going to go to hide from the beast. Because that's the name for the man of sin. That's one of his names, the beast. To be able to get out in that wilderness, get their self together and get on out there. And I was like, wow. Kind of fits together. Am I saying it's written in stone? No. But this is what I'm seeing. This is what I perceive. I could be wrong. But I just thought I'd share that with you for your consideration. For us, for the church, it's kind of interesting to know or consider, but we ain't going to be here for what they going to go through. Although we may see some difficult times coming up here shortly. But I really believe, even as things, it looks like things are growing darker and in a way they are, but it's more the manifestation of the evil that was always there, but was hidden, was cloaked. 
is being unveiled. Because it's what the Lord showed me. We go from, in the Bible, Genesis. Interesting that that word gen, S-S, gene, is in that word. The beginning, man's creation is in the beginning. To the book of the revelation of the God-man. The book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Remember I told you, the is the definite article. That means that one and no other. So you have, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the ultimate truth. He is the truth by which all other truths will be measured. And so in order for the truth to be made manifest, all of the lies have to be exposed. That's why there is nothing here that will not be made known. Praise the Lord. The word of God is so awesome. As I said, y'all stick with your word. Get into your word like you've never gotten into it before. You're going to need it in these last moments of the last minutes of the last hours of the last days. It's our code breaker. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen.